why Next.js exists in the first place and what is the problem that Next is solving. Okay, what is Next.js? Next.js simply is a framework built on top of React.js. It provides you with extra values, which we're going to discuss in details, but the starting point I'd say should be from React because a lot of concepts are the same in React. So if you're familiar with React, then learning Next.js will be a walk in the park for you. Um, because actually learning Next.js depends heavily on your understanding of React. Things like components, uh, JSX syntax, how to deal with states, how to deal with hooks. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for my React course for backend programmers. So you can check it out if you want. But if you don't know React, this following presentation is going to be very useful to have a general overview on what's going on in the client server rendering cycle. So back to our definition of Next.js, you might think Next is a framework built on top of React, which is another framework. And you're right in thinking so. I also have thought the same thing when I first learned Next.js. But to be able to answer this question, we need to know what is the problem that Next.js is solving. So I'm going to show you two different approaches. First of all, we're going to start by the traditional approach of doing things. So let's say that you want to browse to this website, acme.com. What happens here is that there is an HTTP request being sent from the client to the server. Then the server is going to retrieve the requested data from the database. The database then will send data back to the server. And then the server is going to generate all data by building this HTML file. So when data is rendered on the server side in this HTML file, in that moment, the server will send this HTML file as a response to the client and the client will show the HTML file as a response in a visual format to the user. And this is the traditional way in building websites and applications. This is known as the SSR or the server side rendering. And the name is very clear. It explains itself. The HTML file has been rendered on the server side. Now let's move to the second approach where we can use any of the JavaScript frameworks, whether React, Vue, Angular, you know, it doesn't matter, any of the JavaScript frameworks. But just to make things clear, I'm going to choose React as the framework for this example. Now let's get back to our client side. Again, you're visiting acme.com. The client is sending a GET request to the server. The server again is going to fetch data from the database. The data is retrieved from the database to the server. Then the server is going to generate a primary HTML file called index.html. This index.html is going to be empty. It's not going to be populated by the server. It's only going to have a reference to a JavaScript application. But for the most part, it's going to be an empty file. Then the server is going to send it back as a response to the browser. Now the browser will show it as it is and the other components of that web page is being completed via React. Now, let's say, for instance, that you want to visit the context route. So this context route is being processed by the client and not the server. In this case, the client is going to request everything related to that route from React. And React is going to check what is the component that it should retrieve for the user that matches the context route. Hence, React decides the components that should be rendered. And as these components are written in JSX syntax, it needs an extra step to be transpiled to JavaScript. And this is actually done by Babel Transpiler, right? It's going to transpile the JSX to JavaScript code. And why is that? Simply because the browser only can read JavaScript. It cannot read JSX. So that's going to transform this context component to JavaScript code to be embedded in HTML file. Then and only then the context page is going to be rendered on the browser. But suppose that we have other data that needs to be fetched from an external API. In this case, there is an API request is being sent to the server, which retrieves data from the database. The database then will send all of the data back to the server. In this case, instead of filling an HTML file, the server formats the API data in JSON format, as you know. Um, by the way, the data before was formatted in XML, but now JSON format is widely used. So now this API formatted data is sent directly to the client, which is the API response. So what happens for rendering the API data on the screen is that React fills the API data in HTML format so it can be rendered. 
Now this is clear to you that it's the client which is doing the rendering instead of the server in the traditional approach here. So in this approach, everything is being rendered by the client. We don't touch the server. So in contrast to the SSR or the server side rendering, we have the CSR or the client side rendering. And again, this is very clear because everything is being rendered on the client side. All right, that's clear. But you know, here comes the important question through which we will understand what is the role of Next.js. The question is, what is the problem in using any of the JavaScript frameworks? In other words, why do we need Next.js? The main problem in using any of JavaScript frameworks like React, Vue or Angular is what's called SEO or search engine optimization. SEO refers to the process of optimizing your website to improve its visibility and ranking in the SERP or search engine results pages. The primary goal of SEO, I should say, is to increase organic traffic to your website. Organic means not paid, but instead the SEO helps in increasing the organic traffic to your website. How so? By making it more relevant to search engines like Google, Yahoo and whatnot. Some websites are very SEO friendly, which means that the chance of your website to be visible or found on the web is very high. In contrast to other websites which are not SEO friendly means simply that those websites are not discoverable and fall at the bottom of the results. So if you're searching for back brace, for instance, in Google, my website actually uses Next.js. And as you will see in a moment that Next.js helps your website to be SEO friendly. And to give you a quick idea on how the search engine optimization works, let me show you this. Let's take, for instance, Google. Google has those little cute bots or crawlers or spiders. You can call them what you want. So those crawlers go to your website and gather information about your web pages. So when a crawler visits a web page on your website, it's going to analyze the contents and also it's going to follow any links on that page to other pages. It's going to collect the data about Acme.com and the information is going to be added to the search engines index. Indexing allows search engines to quickly retrieve relevant web pages in response to user queries. This is in short the story of the search engine optimization. Um, that's great and all, but where's the problem? Still, we don't understand the problem. Okay, here goes. For the SEO to work and analyze and classify your website in its massive index, Google crawlers are being sent to your server directly to gather information about the URLs, meta tags, and so on. And as the server here fully creates everything in that HTML file, so all of the data already exists on the server, which is great for those little Google crawlers to analyze and index accordingly. Here's the catch. The crawlers cannot visit the client. They only can visit the server. And that's the whole point. If the crawlers are going to visit your index.html file, which is on the server and will not find anything, well, they will not find anything to actually record in their index. However, if they will visit your server and will find all of the data needed, that's good for you. That's going to increase the search engine optimization for your website which is not the case for using JavaScript frameworks here because the index.html file on the server is almost empty. So when the crawlers visit it, they will find nothing to gather, analyze or index. And every time there is a request, React is going to render on the client according to the components it has and it's going to leave the original HTML file here empty, which are essential for the crawlers to work for the SEO. And here's the problem. You want to use React, Angular or Vue. It's easier and simpler to design your project. But in the same time, you want your SPA, your application or website to be optimized for search engines. And this is where Next.js comes into play. Next.js is a framework built on top of React.js. So you can create your SPA using the JSX syntax, state hooks, organize your components as you want. And in the same time, you're guaranteed that your application is going to be optimized for search engines. So now let me show you what will happen if we will use Next.js in our application. When you will visit the context route here, we said that the request is being sent to React. React renders the components after being transpiled from JSX to JavaScript. JavaScript is going to be embedded in HTML and finally it's going to be rendered on the browser. What Next.js will do is that will reflect the rendered or the fully rendered HTML page from the client to the server. 
anytime the crawlers are going to visit your server searching for metadata links or whatever they're going to find all of the data already on the server and this is awesome you don't have to write extra code for that next is going to abstract a lot of the process and everything happens behind the curtains so you can optimize your website in the search engine using the same jsx code that you love in the same time everything is going to be mirrored from the client side to the server side um, anytime those google bots are going to visit the server they are going to find all of the metadata the links um, you know uh, the updated content everything on the server side next is fantastic in a lot of things but this is where it shines this is where it excels it increases the search engine optimization for your website um, and you don't have to sacrifice anything you're going to write your jsx code you're going to write components you're going to use hooks you're going to manage states and all of that in the same time um, your website is going to be easily discoverable on the search engines so just to summarize my final thoughts about next.js in my opinion next.js has combined two things together creating spa using any javascript framework of your preference and in the same time you will be supported by the server-side rendering which is essential to be seo friendly 